welcome to my channel. I am going to walk you through the process of valuing three consumer defensive stocks and analyzing their financial ratios. Comment if you have questions. I respond to every comment. Subscribe if you want to see me value more companies. The first company is Conagra Brands. This company makes and sells products on the various brand names that are available in supermarkets, restaurants, and food service establishments. Let's get started with the model. This company has a market cap of $16.8 billion, so they're a large cap company. They're trading at $34.79 a share. To get the shares outstanding, that's market cap divided by stock price. That gives you the shares outstanding, $481 million. We're going to need this number later when we calculate the value of the company. Let's look at the financials. Free cash flow. That's how you value a company. You estimate the future free cash flows and then discount that number back to today's value. Free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So it's all the cash you generate and spend from your operational business minus what you spend on property, plan, and equipment. Property, plan, and equipment is what you invest in to grow your business. They have positive, consistent, free cash flow each year, and it jumps a lot in 2019 to $1.5 billion. So it looks like they have a lot of cash to work with. The net income is also really good. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And it's good to see they have positive and consistent numbers. Their revenue is also really good. It jumps a lot each year, especially in 2018 and 2019. Their margins are pretty consistent as well. Net profit margin is net income divided by revenue. It's how well you convert revenue into profit. The higher your expenses, the lower your net profit margin. And it looks like they're fairly consistent. Even though their revenue jumped up a lot, so did their net income. Let's look at the capital structure. $9.7 billion of debt. They pay 5% interest on the debt. And the cost of debt is 4%. The way you calculate cost of debt, it's interest rate times one minus the effective tax rate. And they have 55% of debt in their capital structure, which means they have 45% equity. To get the cost of equity, we need the beta. That's how volatile the stock is relative to the market. And they have a low beta. The market has a beta of one. They have a beta of 0.78, so the stock moves less than the market. So it's a low volatile stock. The cost of equity is 8.3%, and we use the capital asset pricing model to figure that out. And their WAC is 5.92%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimate a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. That's $25 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company at $26 billion. We divide that by 481 million shares and we get a calculated stock price of $53. They're trading at $35, so they're trading at a 35% discount. So it's a buy according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street says. They're at $49, so they're also saying the stock is undervalued. Let's see where the stock has been trading at the past few years. Looks like it hasn't moved too much from three, four years ago. It did drop, but it came right back up. Let's look at the financial ratios. They have a weak PE of 19.9, the median is 15.5, the average in the entire market is 23.4. They have a good price of sales at 1.5, the median is 1.8, the average is 5.2. And a good price to book of 2.1, the median is 2.4, the average is 5.4. Price to earnings is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. I like to see below 15, they're at 19.9, so investors are paying $19.90 for $1 of earnings. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 1.5, so investors are paying $1.50 for $1 revenue. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. 
to calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. I like to see below 3.5, there are 2.1. So investors are paying $2.10 for $1 of book value. Remember, equity is total assets minus total liabilities in the balance sheet. A weak current ratio, a weak ROE, and a good interest coverage ratio. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. I like to see between 1.2 and 2, they're at 0.9. So they're a little shy at covering their current debts and payables. ROE is net income over equity. I like to see above 20%, they're at 11%. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. I like to see above 2.0, they're at 3.0. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on General Mills, Hormel, Kellogg, Kraft, and Simply Good Foods. All in the same industry as Conagra. And if Conagra has a number in green, they're better than the average. If they're in red, they're worse than the average. So they are better than the average in PE because the average in the industry is pretty high at 32.2. They have the best price to sales ratio of all the companies. They are much better than average in price to book at 2.1, the average is 3.9. They are below average at 0.9 in current ratio. They're below average in ROE and debt, and their market cap is a little lower than the average. Average is 25 billion, they're at 16 billion. Their dividend yield is better than average. The average in the industry is 2.34, they're at 2.44, so they pay a decent dividend yield. Kraft has the highest at over 5%. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 35% discount, but their ratios are decent. The second company is Ostavol Seafoods, and this is a major Norwegian seafood company. And they trade on the Norwegian Stock Exchange, so everything in this video is in kronas. So their market cap is 16.2 billion kronas, which is equivalent to 1.8 billion US dollars. And they're trading at 83 a share, and they have 196 million shares outstanding. Let's look at their financials. Their free cash flow looks pretty good. They did have a drop in 2018, but the other years are really strong. And their net income is also positive and fairly consistent. So the numbers look pretty good. And their revenue is going up every year, so that's a good sign. Let's look at the capital structure. 7.1 billion of debt. They pay 5% interest on their debt, cost of debt is 4%, and they have 37% of debt in their capital structure, so they have 63% equity. Cost of equity is 8.5%, and to figure out cost of equity, we need the beta, that's how volatile the stock is. They have a low beta 0.8, so the stock moves less than the market. Their WAC is 6.85%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity, and that's a discount rate we're gonna to apply to the future cash flows. So we estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 21 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company at 22 billion. We divide that by 196 million shares. We get a calculated stock price of 114. They're trading at 83, so they're trading at a 27% discount. So it's a buy according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street says. They're saying 86 kronas. So they're saying the stock is a little undervalued, not as much as my model is showing. Let's see where the stock has been trading at the past few years. So it looks like it was much higher a couple of years ago at about 130, but it's dropped quite a bit. Let's look at the financial ratios. Good PE, good price to sales, good price to book. PE is stock price over earnings per share. I like to see below 15, there are 12.9. Price to sales is stock price over sales per share. I like to see below 2.5, there are 0.7. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. I like to see below 3.5, there are 1.3. So all good ratios. Pretty good current ratio, weak ROE, and good interest coverage ratio. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. I like to see between 1.2 and 2, but they're a little over that, which is okay. ROE is net income over equity. I like to see above 20%. They're only at 10%. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. I like to see above 2. They're at 7.2. 
The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, the only other company I did in the same industry as Austerville is Tyson Foods. And Tyson is better in PE and price of sales, although they're pretty close. Austerville is better in price to book and current ratio. Tyson is a little better in ROE. Austerville is a little lower in debt. And Tyson's is a much bigger company, 22 billion market cap. Austerville is 1.8 billion US dollars. But Austerville pays a higher dividend yield at 3.1% compared to Tyson's 2.65%. To summarize, I have them trading at a 27% discount and their ratios look pretty good. The third and last company is Cody. This is an American beauty company founded in 1904 by Francois Cody. It develops, manufactures, markets, and distributes fragrances, cosmetics, skin care, and nail care. The company owns 77 brands. Let's get started with the model. They're a mid-cap company, 2.6 billion market cap. They're trading at 3.25 a share. Their financials look pretty spotty. They have negative free cash flow in two of the four years, positive in two of the four years, and they have negative net income every year. So if you continuously have negative profit, you'll eventually go out of business. Revenue is pretty weak as well. It peaked in 2018 at 9.4 billion, but then dropped to 4.7 billion in 2020. They have $8 billion of debt. They pay 2.9% interest on their debt. That's the cost of debt. This company doesn't pay taxes because they lose money every year. They have a whopping 73% of debt in their capital structure, so they are leveraged, and they have 27% equity. The cost of equity is 10.6%, and we used a beta to figure that out. The beta is not too bad, surprisingly, only 1.08, so the stock moves with the market. Their WAC is 5%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. We discounted those numbers back to today using a weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $1.7 billion. We divide that by 800 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 214. The trading at 325. The trading at a 52% premium. It's a sell according to the model. Simply Wall Street has them valued at 449, so they're saying the stock is undervalued. Let's see where the stock has been trading at the past few years. So it was trading well over $30, but now it's trading below $4, so it's dropped quite a bit. Let's look at the financial ratios. Negative PE, good price of sales, good price to book. PE is stock price over earnings per share. They have negative earnings, so they have negative PE. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. I like to see below 2.5, they are 0 0.6. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. I like to see below 3.5, they are 0 0.9. That's a really good ratio. Good current ratio, bad interest coverage ratio, bad ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. I like to see between 1.2 and 2, they are at 1.8. ROE is net income over equity. They have a negative net income, so they have negative ROE. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They have negative operating income, so they have negative interest coverage ratio. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. The only other company I did in this industry is Procter & Gamble. And if Cody has a number in orange, they're better than Procter & Gamble. And if Procter & Gamble has a number in orange, they're better than Cody. So Procter & Gamble is better in price to earnings because Cody is negative, but Cody has a better price to sales, price to book, and current ratio. Procter & Gamble is better in ROE and debt, and of course in market cap. Neither company pays a dividend yield. To summarize, I have them trading at a 52% premium. Their ratios are okay, but they have negative net income, so they have negative PE, negative ROE. Let me know what you think of the video. Leave a comment. I reply to all comments. Subscribe if you want to see me value more companies. Thanks for watching.